Hi folks and welcome back to the plot. <laughs> it's not until you start, until you hit record that you realise uh, you're very warm <laughs> today. The forecast is like, it's meant to be tipping it down, it's meant to be horrible, so I've been all layered up. <laughs> just hit record a minute ago. I just couldn't speak, I'm so, so hot. It, even in the greenhouse, like when, you know, there's a bit of shade. Anyway, anyway, today, the main thing that I want to talk to you about is the tomatoes. It's getting to that stage where oh, there's, there's a lot going on, you know? Um, everywhere I look, <laughs> there's a few things to do uh, and I'm, I'm not feeling that on top of it, but we'll get there, we'll get there. So the main thing that I've been working on over the past couple of days, I've potted on all my tomatoes and I've just seen, there's two little seed trays here that I've left and they've actually just got something that's germinated. Not this one, I think this one got slugged, but I was gonna bin that but maybe I'll keep it. Anyway, I've got about, is 24? I wanna say 24, is that 24? It is, 24, yes. Um, and these have all been potted up. Most of these had two plants in each one, two seeds, and most of them germinated. So I have actually been quite sensible and I've culled a lot of them. So most of my varieties I had four of and I've only kept two, which is uh, it's quite difficult to do. Uh, there will be people watching going, I can't believe it, you've actually got rid of them. Um, I have left them by the front gate, but they're all in a muddle. <laughs> so there's a bunch of tom to mystery tomatoes for people. And I think these are looking pretty good. I was a little bit worried about my tomatoes. I was getting a bit worried that they were, you know, a little bit behind because I'm looking at people's videos, like people like Tony C. Smith, who've got tomatoes are up here. They're starting to put them out into the ground. And these were sown uh, on this date. And, uh, you know, they're a little bit behind, a little bit. They've grown really well. Um, they took a while to germinate in the greenhouse, though. I had them in an unheated greenhouse, and they, most of them did take a good three weeks to start germinating. Everyone was very worried, but I was I was confident that they'd, they'd be okay, and they do start to race away, especially if you're used to growing chili peppers, which are some of the slowest growing plants. These are looking really healthy, though. They've done really well since I brought them out into the greenhouse. A little bit of kind of scorching and you know where they weren't properly hardened off and these these all could do with potting on as well so yeah when I say there's lots and you know I'm looking around and there's lots but oh there really is there really is a lot so not only have I been potting on my tomatoes I've also had a marathon couple of days potting on loads of other stuff that I'm going to show you oh the chili peppers are looking good aren't they but we're not here to, for chilies today uh, I do I do have this second tray of chilies here look and they shouldn't really be in the shade. They need to get out, but where I've been doing all the tomato, they've been taking up all the space. But look down here, look at this. I'm finally being a responsible allotmenter. I've got loads and loads of things potted on. This is, <laughs> where's my finger? Uh, this is basil, just standard sweet basil. And I've got kind of four pots of those. I'm probably going to split up a lot of these again and give them all kind of, you know, the thing that everyone does where they grow a little bit of basil at the base of the tomatoes. It just looks good. It smells amazing too. So I'm really hopeful for those. The lettuce looking really good. Loads and loads of different lettuce varieties in here that are finely potted on. They were just starting to get a little bit long in the tooth. And I've kind of, a lot of these are modules that I've split in half as well, where they were just sown far too densely. So I'm Gonna have them in here for maybe a couple more weeks and then get them straight out. Marigolds, look at all of these marigolds. There are so many in here. There's a couple of different varieties as well. There's some African crackerjack and something gem um, and then a standard French, French marigold as well. And over here, oh, look at this. So this is giant Prague celeriac, which is, uh, uh, you're not really meant to do this, but I'll show you, I, <laughs> I have done it properly. Oh, over here, look. The Osimum Sanctum. <laughs> I can barely get through that without laughing. The Holy Basil. What a slow grower. I think this likes it hot. But we've got two in there and some more sweet basil. Look at that one behind it looking really good. Nice, nice, nice. And then a little, little disappointment. Look at this, my cumin. I was so excited about this. And I think there's a lettuce or maybe even a calendula growing in here as well. Um, a real shame but uh, there's still a couple of cumin seedlings in here. I'm not sure if they got too cold. I think they like it hot. So yeah, I've always struggled with cumin, but hopefully, hopefully some of them will pull through. Let's go and have a look at the tomatoes properly. This greenhouse is where it's starting to look a little bit scary. These, look at these. Oh, this is appalling, isn't it? 
Some really, really sad looking French beans. They've just gotten long in the tooth. They, they need to go out. I've just let them stay in those trays a little bit too long. The ones on the right looking really healthy, but these are both, I think these are Cobra. So, you know, I need to make a trellis. But in fact, on my auntie and uncle's plot, they've got a trellis ready made. So I might just bung them in there, but that's easier said than done. There's a bit of prep work. Some cabbages still in here, whoops. <laughs> we'll get them out as soon as possible. I really need to sow the winter cabbages. I could probably do with getting most of these beetroot out now. Quite a lot of aphid damage on there. And then some more kind of rubbish brassicas at the back. I don't know if I'm gonna keep those. Maybe I'll just give those away. <gasps> Down here, look. Whoa, look at this. What a little treat. I just didn't think these were gonna germinate. This is honey nut squash. And once again, all of my squash plants, which, uh, where are, <laughs> where are all my I don't know where anything is. I'm so disorganized. I'm looking around like, where are the squash plants? Uh, I actually don't know. They must be in the other greenhouse, I hope, unless someone's stolen them. Uh, but yeah, you know, a lot of them ready to get divided and potted on. But anyway, what I actually came here for, the tomatoes. Now this is looking much better, isn't it? These are, I think I got these just in the nick of time. They weren't too root bound, you know, their roots had really filled out those modules, but I think they're gonna be okay. I think they're gonna carry on racing away. I don't think they're gonna be stalled or anything like that. Um, I've given, given them kind of prime position on this shelf. It might get a little drafty, but this has a nice auto vent on it. So this will only open when it's really warm and the tomatoes can deal with the breeze. But we've got, oh, there's just so many varieties. In fact, I'm not gonna go through them all. I'm just gonna put a link in the description to the video where I showed you all the different varieties that I'm sowing. But I just think these look so, so good. The ones on the left-hand side, the Brad's, they're a bit of an heirloom variety. They've got that kind of heirloom DNA. So they're looking a bit weird, a little, little bit a little bit thin. Um, but also actually these were sowed a little bit later because I did I did forget my brad seeds. And it, you know what else I forgot? Pots. I ran out of pots, which is why uh, some of the ones in the other greenhouse are in uh, other sized pots, which is just so, so, so blooming annoying, but completely my own fault. The, the start of the show, probably, I think the black strawberry. And this one was kindly sent to me by Audrey, I believe. Link to her channel in the description. But these plants have just absolutely romped away. The size of their stem compared to the rest, they're just leagues ahead. There's another black strawberry here. And just really, really healthy looking plants. Some of the first to germinate. And, oh, here we go. Do you remember? I had one of my, one of my seedlings was completely and utterly slugged. And I sowed another one and it's come up. This is my honeycomb. F1 and in the other greenhouse there is another honeycomb plant but this is one of the ones I was so 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 excited to try so I'm really really happy that we've got some germination on there. God I am such an idiot I literally panned the camera onto these squashes when I said I was looking for the squashes uh, but look at this the spaghetti squash you can see yellowing cotyledons there these are ready they, they just fill up those little pots so quick but these are looking really good these were some of the early sowings unfortunately not too much of a sign of the, well, in fact, no sign of any of the other squashes uh, just yet, but the sweet corn behind it, oh, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Looking really, really cool. It looks like grass, actually, to be honest. Um, well, okay, that's fine. <laughs> it just makes me think of weeds. I immediately want to like start pulling it. <laughs> don't do that, don't do that. And yeah, just back in here, this is my honeycomb, a really, pretty small, relatively feeble looking plant. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed for the honeycomb. I'm really hoping that these come through and uh, I'll leave a little link in the description to this one. I think it was sent to me by Grain Local. A really, really cool looking tomato. And you know what else is exciting just next door? We have a slightly, <laughs> slightly dry, slightly wilted strawberry. And ah, oh, I was so smug. I was pretty confident that I had some of the earliest strawberries, but in the time that this has taken to ripen, I've seen loads of other people posting about theirs. Even Liz Zorab, who is in Wales, which is not a particularly sunny or easy place to grow things, um, has got her strawberries are turning ripe now too. First strawberry of the season. <laughs> oh, it's a big smile. Oh, they smell so good, don't they? Homegrown strawberries, just oh, amazing. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one too. I tell you what, I've actually had some really bad luck 
with homegrown strawberries. Quite a few years have gone by where I've had just really gross tasting strawberries. They're just kind of watery, flavorless, maybe bitter. That was a good one. So I think growing them in the greenhouse or a polytunnel is probably the way to go. There's more to show you. There's so much more. There's another tray down here that I almost forgot about. And this is uh, brassicas. Some of the, the kind of later ones, you know, so ones that I want to definitely keep going. I don't want to put them out yet. We've got some Brussels sprouts, Red Bull and Evesham, purple spring broccoli. I've started that very early, I know, but that's my little secret to get actually good looking plants. And I've put these into the container wise three by five massive cells. These are absolutely huge. Basically, these are these are bigger than a lot of the kind of small pots that you get. <laughs> Looking around for the small pots, where are the small pots? These are usually what I will first pot something up into from a module, and these these are actually bigger. So I've given these quite a lot of feed, and they're going to stay in there for quite a while yet. I'm going to try and keep them relatively cool, make sure they're somewhere shaded in the greenhouse, and keep those going for a little while longer yet. Yeah. And up here, look, there's another tray. I need to do some purple kale and some green sprouting broccoli as well. A few kind of experimental things. Like I say, it's just everywhere I look at the moment, there's things that either need to be outside or need to be potted on. And just behind me, I've just seen some more. The cucumbers, the tomatoes, that's one of the overwintered crimson crush, and the melons as well are crying, crying out for bigger pots. And not only that, I've been thinking a lot today about getting some stuff done on the new plot and on the third plot. If you missed that, go and watch my last video. But looking at the new plot, you've got to be kidding me. It literally just started raining. I think what I'm going to do, basically give up on this, give up on here, all the onions I planted. The shallots are fine, they'll, they'll come through, but there are so many weeds. I made some really stupid beginner mistakes with no dig. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cover it with cardboard, kill off all the weeds and come back to it later, at a later date. <laughs> I'm going to give that another go and just forget about it. But over here, I do have a little area that I covered with cardboard and you can see the weeds coming through. So it's done something, but uh, yeah, what I'm thinking I might do in here is some of those onion starts that I bought, but I'm not going to go no dig, I don't think, because I have a feeling that we will have the exact same problems that I've had everywhere else. So for this, I'm going to kind of, whoa, I don't really know. I'm going to just get the onions in. Maybe I'm just going to remove all that cardboard and just leave enough space between the rows of onions to actually weed them. There are bits where, you know, over here, I've done the spuds and these are not no dig and you can just see the sea of weeds, you know, the absolute sea. But with something like potatoes, it doesn't really matter. And I think for the onions, it's, it's a relatively small area. So it's just something that I can hopefully try and keep on top of. And then all of my spare potatoes, which I have an awful lot of, they can go on the third plot. So <laughs> I think that's the plan. Anyway, I'm going to spend a little while kind of figuring that out and then show you what I've done. Oh, I should say as well, um, there's something in the greenhouse I forgot to show you. Two new chili pepper plants. And these are a gift from one of my lovely patrons, lovely Louise, in fact, who came by in person for a little in-person tour because they were passing through. They wanted to drop off some chilies and we had a wonderful time. Absolutely could not stop talking about all things gardening. Just crazy gardening people, you know? Uh, and I was showing her just everything and she she was really surprised actually by um, <laughs> how much work there is to do around. Um, she did say, I'm very honest, showing uh, pretty much everything there is on the videos, but when you see it in person, she was like, oh, you do have your work out, don't you? Which <laughs> did feel very validating. Do check out the links for the Patreon in the description um, and a massive thank you to all of my Chili Puppeteer patrons, Louise, of course, Tony, Bill, Pam and Michael as well. Let's go and have another little look at the third plot and I'll try and decide where to put the potatoes. I had loads and loads of really helpful advice in my last video's comments, so thank you to everyone who did comment. I think what I'm going to do, squash patch here, squash patch there, there's an amazing bean frame up here that I was just talking about earlier. And so I'm going to probably put some of my climbing beans in here and just steal this. I'm sure my auntie and uncle won't mind. Although, you know, that's not such an easy job just preparing that. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, it's a nice little bit of rhubarb there, um, 
is bring over some cardboard and where I'm going to put the squash is just put down a load of cardboard for now. Although I don't actually have all that much. Uh, there's a couple of strawberry beds here. I am going to mow as soon as it's a bit drier. I don't want to mow at the moment because it will just, everything will get gummed up. And then maybe there's some stakes there, but I don't think there's anything growing in there. So I might do some spuds in here as well. One thing I will say, they have an amazing paths here. There's like a really nice diversity. There's daisies, there's this purple vetch, which is really good, a legume. I think there's a colt's foot, loads of uh, bittercress. Bittercress, is that what it is? Um, the chickweed, chickweed, that's what I mean. And loads and loads of clover as well. A really, really nice kind of plant community on their paths. But anyway, let me get cracking. Let me do an actual bit of work and then I'll show you what I got up to, <laughs> whether or not I ran out of steam immediately after showing, but we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna give it a go. Well, folks, welcome back. And you can see behind me, the sun is setting. I got kind of carried away or, well, I suppose kind of carried away, but really I just went, you know what? I, I, there's just so much that needs to be getting done. Let's just do it, you know, let's just, Let's just put the time in, put the work in and, and actually get some stuff done. I'm feeling pretty satisfied. Look at this. Ignore the mess around it. Don't look at that. Look at this. <laughs> look at this nicely, freshly dug bed. I went old school, you know, and I just dug this over and I have pulled out so many roots. It's so much kind of cooch grass. And you can just see here, you know, all of those roots. It's a little bit slow going, but I just, I didn't dig too deep, just enough to kind of loosen that surface and pull out all of those long, long roots. And I've got two kind of onions in here. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't realize. It's actually still one of the modules left. Um, you know, I might just bung that in the ground somewhere. Multi-sewing, let's call it multi-sewing. <laughs> but yes, really, really happy with this. It feels quite nice actually to have properly just turned over. I, I, I'm struggling with no dig a little bit, you know, it's, it requires, I don't know, I don't know what it requires. If it was just the mulch wasn't enough, but it, yeah, it's not been working too well for me. In some places it's doing well over here in the raised beds. It is pretty good, but I said I was giving up on this and you know what I thought actually, no, let's not give up. And I still had a load of onions to plant. So I've put my red onions in here and you know, this middle bed is probably the best of the lot. The back one is awful. So I have just covered that for now and maybe I'll tackle that when I've got some time. But honestly, I think probably not. I think probably I've got loads of other stuff to get on with. So it's all about prioritizing at the moment and using the time I've got as effectively as possible. I just can't really afford to be spending lots of time on stuff that doesn't really actually have a result at the end of the day. You know, it's fine if you really enjoy it, but when you start to get frustrated about you know, all the jobs you've got to do, then then it's time to just, you know, really focus, knuckle down. I really want to be able to do a little bit for my auntie and uncle now that they're so busy. I want to just be able to do a little bit for their plot. And so red onions in here. Oh, look, oh, I just missed that potato. But I've been pulling out loads of weeds and getting properly under, you know, digging up the plantain and all the potatoes that are coming up. Still to do this bed. But I do think maybe, maybe a little bit premature completely giving up on this. What a gorgeous evening it is. Wow. I think it is one of those things with allotments, you know, sometimes there are times where you know, you're kind of up against it and you've just got to put the work in. You've just got to kind of knuckle down, suck it up, whatever you like to say, um, and just get the work done. But you, you feel good. You feel good at the end of it. And a long road ahead there's still so much to do on here but as long as i'm smiling as i'm doing it then it's worth it thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you again in the next one